Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this afternoon workshop that uh, we're really looking forward to sharing with you a, a sampling of frameworks and practices of mind fitness skills and to really look at what do we mean by mind fitness and how can you apply these in your daily life. We'll have about a little over an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. And, and then tomorrow, Joel and I are offering a full day workshop. So if you're really interested and you'd like to deepen and explore um, even further, please join us. And we'll hope, hopefully we'll have time for questions today too, but we'll just run through a, a series of sampling of practices that we find really helpful. So one way that we love to begin a program is just to invite you to just become fully present here, okay? And maybe just if your legs are crossed, uncross them. Let your feet touch the floor. As your feet touch the floor, just connect with everyone and everything in your life that, that gives you support and strength that gives you ground to stand on, that you can draw strength and inspiration from. And just like a grand old tree with deep roots in the, in the ground, just feel the deep roots that you have with traditions or ancestors or practices or mentors or sources of strength and inspiration that you draw from, that you draw nourishment from. As you feel that deep grounding, also sit upright with a sense of dignity and strength. And just let yourself, your body just rise up into the heavens like a, a great antenna that says, I'm here to learn, I'm here to serve. Um, may I collect all of the subtle signals in the vast space of infinite openness and infinite connectedness. May I be sensitive to the ripples and the force that I most need to register in order to find a path that's true for me and, and find the words and the deeds and the ways of living and working and creating and serving that are for the highest good of all. And as you sit in this stance of, you know, really great strength and great openness. Sense yourself sitting here at the center of your universe, surrounded by all the people here in the room and here at the conference. Sense yourself sitting here, surrounded by all your loved ones and friends, your colleagues and coworkers, your suppliers and your customers, and the people whose lives they touch and the people whose lives they touch, and the people whose lives they touch, just rippling out with all the special effects you can find. And just for a moment, just pause and consider if you leave this workshop or this conference today with even one bright idea that allows you to carry more light, more wisdom, more presence, more loving kindness, more compassion into the world. How many people's lives might you touch directly or indirectly as that understanding or that quality of being ripples out through you and is reflected in the hearts and minds of, of countless beings whose lives are connected to your life? So through this calibration, through this alignment, through this attunement, as you sit here connected to vast and infinite sources of relatedness in a, in a frame of, of infinite consequentiality, just clarify your own intention for being here, your own deepest questions, your aspirations, the wishes, the prayers, the desires, the needs that drive you. And let us carry that into wherever we go from here. Okay? Great practice for beginning the day, for beginning a meeting. We had a, one of our clients from uh, Silicon Valley Bank, a woman who ran the bank for a while, was in a program where we did something like this on the front end, you know, just and similar to what we talked about with Intel earlier in the first presentation. 
And after that session, she started all the meetings at the bank, just having people pause and, and connect and to consider you know, all of the stakeholders, all of the people whose lives might be touched by the decisions that were made in the room uh, during those meetings. And uh, I think it's helpful for us to just use reflections like this to expand our consciousness. And she really spoke to the, the difference it made in the level, the depth of listening and, and reflection that came. And just the whole tone of the meetings would be different when they began realizing it was more than just who was visibly present in the room, but that they were there with and for on behalf of this larger community. So as we continue, I'd like to invite you just on the count of three, reach out in the space in front of you and pick up an apple, okay? One, two, three and look at it and see what you've got here. How many people have a red apple? How many have a green apple? How many have a yellow apple? <laughs> Interesting. How many people have a stem on your apple? Facing up? <laughs> Facing down? How many How have a multicolored apple? OK. And as we do this to appreciate, how, how do you know what color your apple is? You know, like, <laughs> how many people have an iPhone 6? You know? Or, uh, apple. or I mean, like in this, when you reach out and grab it, you know, or an uh, iPad. Or, you know, but to, to begin to become mindful of these subtle harmonics of being alive that we don't pay so much attention to. You know, it's like, how many of you really vividly see the apple? How many of you have a good kinesthetic sense of it? The shape, the, the form, weight. the weight? How many of you can smell it? How many of you salivate if I say, imagine biting in, into it? Okay. <laughs> Wonderful study that was done on a group of uh, scientists you know, saying, how do you make your breakthroughs in creativity and innovation? It was fascinating. Um, some percentage of them would would come to their breakthrough ideas through mathematical equations that are, would arise in their mind. Some would come to their breakthroughs through kinesthetic feelings, you know, patterns of energy or movement or sensation in the body. Some would visually see images or, you know, meaningful kinds of, of imagery that would arise in the mind. Others had objectless knowing like clear knowing. So this whole notion of mindfulness that we hear about is essentially waking up to all the harmonics and the wavicles of the ways that you know and that you experience and being awake and sensitive to how life presents itself to you. As we launch into this afternoon, we'd just like to share a little bit of conceptual framework and then focus mostly on experiential learning, okay? So, but remember the apple and just, you know, please, as we proceed, um, you know, assume some uh, responsibility for being a co-producer of whatever <laughs> comes next, okay? Because we'll say whatever we, we say and you're going to have whatever apple you create, okay? So just be mindful of what's happening on the outside really tuned in and listening, but also be really mindful at the same time of what's happening on the inside, the images that come to mind, the emotions that arise, the sensations within your body. So this term of mindfulness that's becoming so trendy and so in, you know, we really want to present this as an operating system, not an app. You know, it's not just about a technique, but it's really about a way of life. It's a way of, of accessing and being available to greater wisdom. It's not stripped, it's not a technique that's taken out of its deep core of ethics, ethical foundation and you know, deeper, the way that we relate to each other and to our world. It's not only about a quality of attention, but it's really a whole way of living and, and being with each other and working in the world. And in a sense, if you wanna, you were talking about mind fitness here, you know, there's two primary dimensions to the mind, okay? One is the dimension of the mind where the contents are ever-changing. Sounds come and go, thoughts come and go, motions arise, sensations come and flow through the body. Experiences happen and then subside. Things have a beginning and an end. 
That's one dimension of the mind. And most of our experience and our psychology is really focused on managing that flow of energy and information. But there's another dimension of the mind which is open and clear and vast and boundless like the sky. It's the space in which clouds come and go, in which storms come and go. It's knowing, it's clear, it's boundless, it's objectless. And therefore, it doesn't get a lot of mark on. It doesn't get a lot of conversation because you can't describe it other than awake. Aware. Aware. Aware mind, of being aware. Mindful. But in a sense, if, all, if I could count to three and snap my fingers and all of us would just push the pause button on the, on the changing mind. Let's try that. One, <laughs> two, three. And we are all just here looking out through our eyes and smiling to ourselves in a space of open, clear awareness. There would just be one mind here. Okay? But within that one mind, you're having your experiences, the Mila experiences, and Joel's <laughs> having the, the Joel experiences, and Tom's having the Tom experiences. But when we just you know, drop in deep enough, like islands you know, below the surface of the, the ocean, there's this deep common substrate of shared knowing, mind, collective intelligence, presence, sacred holy being, Depends on your frame of reverence. Um, so mindfulness is just a wonderfully skillful way to drop the bottom out and say, would you like to have a deeper conversation about being alive and being aware and doing business and all that? But, and mindfulness can be very, you know, kind of mindful to space stress reduction and eight weeks will give you the app. But as Michelle's saying, you know, we're talking about fundamental connection with core operating system here and how to uh, get more in touch with that. The Parker Palmer quote. It's this great quote from uh, Parker Palmer, uh, who's a great teacher, very wise man. He says, a leader is a person who has an unusual degree of power to project on other people his or her shadow or his or her light. A leader is a person who has an unusual degree of power to create the conditions under which other people must live and move and have their being, conditions that can either be as illuminated as heaven or as shadowy as hell. A leader is a person who must take social responsibility for what's going on inside his or herself, inside his or her consciousness, lest the act of leadership create more harm than good. The problem is that people in our rise to leadership in our society by a tendency towards extroversion, which means a tendency to ignore what's going on inside. Leaders rise to power in our society by operating very competently and effectively in the external world, but sometimes at the cost of internal awareness. I've looked at some training programs for leaders and I'm discouraged how often they focus on the development of the skills to manipulate the external world rather than the skills necessary to go inward to make the inner journey. So. And just a word of warning as we embark into this. Or at least caution. Oh, con okay. <laughs> it takes courage to do this work. It takes courage to wake up. It takes courage to sit in the fire of your own cognitive dissonance. When we were asked after a, a report was released saying that more than twice as many men and women died of suicide when they came back from war than died in combat, which gave rise to us being invited in to try and help them find an alternative to that. Many of the men were scared to death of sitting quietly with their own minds and looking inside. And so this notion that mindfulness is not for the faint-hearted. If you want to build a mindful organization, you will have an uncomfortable organization because you'll get to wrestle with all the ethical questions and dilemmas and work the stuff that otherwise might be mindlessly ignored. Lao Tzu said, a person with outer courage dares to die, 
and a person with inner courage dares to live. So we, you know, really we're expanding the spectrum of what does that mean to have both the, the inner and the outer courage that's required at times of crisis. Mm -hmm. So you could say, you know, most people don't operate their minds well because they don't know what it is or how it works. And it's a little hard to catch hold of, you know, but some of our best teachers in this work have been engineers, deeply spiritual engineers um, who are fascinated by the nature of consciousness. And uh, what we found over the years is that when a techie or an engineer gets interested in recombinant psychology and, and working with the mind, and they start to realize the same kind of rigor and attention that's gone into trying to make things be work better on the outside can be applied to re-choreographing and calibrating themselves for optimal performance or deeper wisdom or greater capacity. They really pick it up quick because it makes sense. And I think that's really quite exciting. As William James, the, the father of modern psychology, once said, the greatest thing in all education is to make the nervous system our ally instead of our enemy. And I think, you know, just to, to feel some great sense of tenderness for yourself, for the gift that your parents and your ancestors gave you, that you have a multi-layered nervous system capable of being awake that you're awake, to be able to smile and go, how cool is that, you know? And just, I'm awake and look at this weird cartoon show passing through my mind and not have to identify with that. So working with the mind, this is a great model of, you know, what we're talking about in terms of mind fitness that comes from the US Military Academy, West Point. And it's a, it's a good, robust model, cognitive foundations of beliefs and values, driving the goals that we set and the intentions we hold, learning how to master attention through mindfulness and concentration, learning how to manage stress and, and self-regulate, uh, working with visualization and creative imagination. Um, one of our Navajo teachers, actually, I'll ask a question. How many of you know I think you have a very creative mind. And how many people, maybe not so much, you know, not so good. How many of you know how to worry really well? <laughs> okay, you are creative, okay? You are super creative. Good visualization. Yeah, and as one of our Navajo teachers, David Chetlahe Paladin used to say, worrying is just praying backwards. <laughs> worrying is just praying backwards, you know, so. Imagine what you could do with all that creative energy, you know, if you were invested in non-toxic assets and use it to build your health and your strength and your vitality rather than just decimate yourself. So a good model. Another model, you know, from uh, University of uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin Medical School. We use this a lot when we work in medicine, say, let us break this down for you. It doesn't have to be complicated. Many times throughout the day, pause, get present, and proceed. Pause, wake up, get present, feel your hands touching your sides, take a mindful breath, see the thoughts going through your mind, hear the sounds around you, pause, get present, get traction with reality and then proceed. And if you do that many times a day, you will be less anxious, less stressed, less depressed, more creative, more productive, less likely to burn out. Good return on the investment. Okay. Another way to work with the mind, understand the mind, let's say there's the, the creative mind. You know, most of us are pretty familiar with this. We've been educated to think and reason. We haven't been educated so much to use our creative imagination and visualization so much, but you could all find an apple, okay? So, and you all know how to worry, it looks like. Um, and then there's intention. Michelle invited us to consider the importance of intention earlier. These are all yang, generative qualities of mind. You know, they, 
they shape reality. They, they help us have control and, and to, uh, to think and to do. But these qualities of mind are also balanced. Oh, actually, before we do that, just on the count of three, reach out and receive or touch or pick up something that symbolizes for you this creative mind or this generative mind, okay? Just see what the universe gives you on this. One, two, three. Something you can touch, something you can hold that symbolizes creative mind, generative mind. All right? See what that is. N notice how it comes to you. And just call out what images or symbols come to mind. Paper, what else? Pen, Pen what Paint else? Brush. Guitar. Paintbrush, guitar, sunflower, sunflower. Skull. skull, screwdriver, screwdriver. <laughs> heart, okay. Very colorful toy, wonderful. Okay, it's working. <laughs> then the other, hold that one in that hand, you know, don't lose it. And then in the other hand, just consider and tune into the dimension of the mind that is more receptive, more kind of listening. Uh, your somatic intelligence, just that dimension of you that's embodied and present, just here. That quality of mindful presence, awakeness, mysterious knowing that is sitting there smiling, wondering what's going to happen next. And this quality of intuitive intelligence, which is that dimension where the portal is open to the stream of revelations and inspirations and great ideas that might light you up. Um, maybe as imagery, but maybe also as just as clear knowing, objectless knowing. And on three, reach out and just pick up or receive or touch something that symbolizes the more receptive mind for you, okay? One, two, three. See how that comes to you, be mindful of that. And what, what images or symbols come to mind here? Flowers. A flower, what A else? Pool. Pool. Water. Water. Doorknob. Doorknob. Rain. Hmm. Rain. Sponge, diamond. Okay, so hold both of these for a moment. And again, in a sense of kind of aligning, attuning, calibrating, just see if you can find a balance of these two realities or dimensions of your being, these two qualities of creative intelligence that are so vital to the wholeness of your being. And just see if maybe there's a gesture that brings them really into ideal balance in some kind of way, the, like you're tuning an antenna. Just see what that is. This generative and receptive aspect of the mind. And just breathe and just kind of see what it's like to come into that kind of balance of receptive and generative at the same time. And then on three, if you like, you may not want to mess with things, but if you like, um, bring both of those symbols together and let them interfuse and see what happens when they merge, okay? One, two, three. And just notice what happens as you do that. Just an image, a symbol, a feeling, a word, you know, just... And then a few samples, just what did you have in one hand, what did you have in the other hand, what happened when you brought them together, and call it out loud enough that people can hear, but then we'll repeat for the recording, okay? Color. Movement. Color, Color movement. movement. Warmth. Warmth. Imprinted. imprinted. Yeah, the image became imprinted. Fire. Fire. The sun melting. melting. Tree, over water. Tree over water. Sounds like the I Ching. <laughs> okay. So again, these are just ways to kind of like welcome to the playground. You know, it's like 
all these wondrous capacities came bundled with your humanity. How often do you take these toys out and play with them and work with them and refine them and receive the gifts that these open for you? So it's really in putting together this quiet, receptive mind and this more active one, you know, the, the more prayerful, intentional, like a scientist looking for a solution to some situation or some problem, holding that intention in a very bright, clear way, and listening, really receptive, saying, help me, you know, teach me. What, what might be clues to a solution here? Bringing, bringing that yang and that yin together, that active and that receptive together. This really is the, the heart and core of our creative intelligence. So as we bring this work into organizations, this is kind of a macro model for it. Um, this is one way to understand it. There's the moral and ethical foundations of this work. And a lot of contemporary mindfulness teachings, that's not real explicit anymore, which is sad because in the classic traditions, it's vibrant and foundational. So as we introduce this in organizations, we talk about, well, you know, if you've got toxic relationships, you'll probably have a, have a lot of mind-body distress, right? And there won't be a great deal of health and vitality in your people. Therefore, if you want to improve the wellness of people, you've got to have people being weller together, kinder together, more supportive, communicating better, nonviolent communication, cooperation. So if we can build quality relationships, more likely we'll get mind-body harmony. If we can let go of the stress and build more wellness, then, then from that mind-body harmony, then we can begin to learn how to work with the mind, develop more concentration, samadhi, focus. Take that wandering mind and make it more coherent and flowing. As the mind becomes more coherent, more peace and more power, then mindfulness just naturally arises. We're awake and then we learn how to sustain that wakefulness and to pay attention and to listen in deeper ways. That gives us more insight, more intuition that grows our wisdom. And then that wisdom ex expresses as innovation, efficiency, compassion, effectiveness, creativity that improves the quality of relationships. And I know some of you have meditation and yoga practices, this is how it would map into that. And the quadrant from one to three there, it's all the practices for harmonizing and balancing energy, mastering stress, um, easing strain. From three o'clock to six o'clock, mind-body harmony to mindful attention. So these are all the practices for building focus, concentration, samadhi, um, coherence in the mind. From six o'clock to nine o'clock, this is where you really work with mindfulness and deep inquiry and deep looking into the nature of things, giving rise to wisdom. And from nine o'clock to uh, 12 o'clock there, these are all the practices for really building creativity and loving kindness and compassion and, and ethics and integrity and really bringing those online. So, you can see the inner and the outer work seamlessly mapped together. There's lots of technology available. Um, and there's lots of evidence-based research to affirm the efficacy of the technology. So a map of the territory. Okay. Maybe take it into the focus. OK. So holding the intention that you set earlier or um, recalibrating regenerating, whatever your intention might be for this session. Let's just begin to do some practice for first uh, building focus and concentration, which really lays the foundation for being able to develop a, a deeper wisdom and insight, or just to kind of begin to let the mind settle and calm so that there isn't as much turbulence and wandering. And it's, more, it's a more powerful mind when we're focused and, and concentrated, there's greater peace as well as greater power. And one, one pretty universal way of, of connecting with these types of techniques for uh, 
focusing, and it's a kind of a, a balanced focus. This is not a tight or rigid focus, but a real, there's a sense of flow and movement within the focus. Is to begin as you're sitting here comfortably, sitting straight, taking your seat, um, to just notice the natural flow of your breath in this moment. Just find your breath wherever you notice it most strongly. Perhaps in your abdomen, belly, your chest. Just the, the movement of rising with the inhalation. Just letting go, the falling, the release with the exhalation. And perhaps for you, you notice the breath coming in and out through the nostrils more, more predominantly. Just however it is for you, just find that gateway of the breath. No need to change or breathe in any special way. Just simply witnessing, following, and flowing with this natural movement. So that as a breath comes in, you know you're breathing in. Breathing out, you know you're breathing out. Establishing this home base of mindful breathing, mindful awareness of the breath. And in a moment, just to bring, to recruit more neurons, to build even greater coherence and congruence within the nervous system. As you experience the sensation of the breath coming in, the inhalation, just allow one hand or both hands to just rise to float up with the in-breath and to just synchronize with the breath to just flow down with the exhalation. So we're bringing the body in in a more, even more visible and tangible way with the more subtle sensation of the breath. Letting the hands follow the breath. The breath is leading. You can even just use one finger more subtly if you like. And now we're going to integrate the speech center as well as the, the mind, the awareness, and the body. So that as you breathe in and, and your hands raise, rise, say to yourself silently, here. And as the breath goes out, the hands lower, now. So just a simple word here on the in-breath, now on the out-breath. Just as a way to collect all the energy of your body, speech, and mind, focusing it in this very present moment with each breath. Here, now. You may notice that some breaths are longer, some are more shallow, swifter. The movement of the hands can just help you connect with that change, moment to moment change that's always happening. Here. Now. You could use another phrase like, arriving on the in-breath, home, home to yourself, home to your true being on the out-breath, just coming home to this present moment, arriving home. You can create a phrase for yourself that you like, just, just keep it simple. receiving on the in-breath, receiving all the nourishment and inspiration that you need, and radiating on the out-breath, sharing it, sending this life force energy out into the world, receiving, radiating. Here, now. And 
and just pausing for a moment to check in with yourself and just run a little discerning check in. Just you know, what were the fruits of that, these experiments, the gifts? How does it feel to be alive in this moment? Just having collected your mind, body, and harnessed the power of the mind that likes to talk to itself, just bringing it here into the moment along with the awareness and the movement of the body and the breath. So just a, a brief sampling in a word or an image, what what's present? What came forth from that? What was the effects of running that protocol in the laboratory of your life? Just a word or an image? Just call it out. What are you left? Peaceful, what else? Clarity. Clarity. In sync. Awkward. Awkward, okay, beautiful, that's true. Something new. Yeah. yeah. Many new moves our first time is like, what am I doing <laughs> and how does this work and neuromuscular patterns aren't a step. It can be awkward. Creating new circuits in the Bless brain. Bless the awkwardness. <laughs> Heather, anything else? Space. Space. Strength. Strength. Space out. Space out. <laughs> So remember the Karate Kid movies, you know, wax on, wax off. You know, wax. <laughs> yeah, it's just why am I doing this? You know, breathing in, breathing out, waving my hands in the air, saying magic incantations <laughs> like here and now. Why? In order to develop the capacity to maintain the focus of your awareness. Would that be valuable? You know, rather than. Whoosh, you know, the scattered monkey mind. I mean, we all have mastered that one by now, haven't we? But this concentration thing, you know, choosing one thing to focus on deeply, really deeply, in a continuous kind of way, wax on, wax off, you know. And if you hold the intention to pay attention and you're willing to just stay with it, then gradually, like, like as you look out through your eyes right now, try this, just really intently look at Michelle's beauty for a moment, okay? <laughs> I mean, just take you her in. You can, and as you do, I mean, just visually take her as the object of your contemplation. And hold that intention and imagine that all those neurons that allow you to visually focus or to appreciate beauty or whatever it is, as you hold the intention to pay attention in that kind of way, all of those neural pathways get activated and strengthen. And, they, and those neurons start to build bridges between themselves and build more robust neural pathways that allow you to maintain the focus of intention. Now you can relax a little bit, okay? So that with many of these, these practices, they're like, mind sprints where for 30 seconds or a few minutes you hold your intention on the magic mantra here and now or focus and flow or, or just breathing in with awareness, breathing out for awareness. You hold that for some period of time and as you do, you, you rewire the brain to be able to do that easier. It's like these mind programs is you run them, the more you run them in a quality way, the, the easier the programs run. So that there's this neural suppleness and connectivity that, that grows as you take tasks like, I'm going to walk from, my, from the parking garage to my office in a mindful way. I'm going to have this conversation that I'm about to begin. And I'm really going to show up for it. I'm going to eat this bowl of ice cream <laughs> and savor it with full intention and attention. You know, just little activities that have a beginning and an end that you challenge yourself to show up for. And here's, here's a real key. 
if you get one point for every moment of sustained attention, you get two points every time the mind wanders and you notice the excursion and you come back. Okay? Every time you notice that the mind wanders, you notice the excursion and you come back, you get double points. Okay? Yeah, and it's, it's like the recognition is like, um, and the repetition is like working out, building your muscles your, of your physical body. At the gym, you do how many sets, you know, the repetitions actually build those muscles. It's the same thing in this kind of mind training where we're learning to tame that wild galloping horse of the mind. And, or, or it's kind of like if you've ever trained a little puppy to sit, and sits for a second, jumps off again, you know, stay. And the more the puppy learns sit, stay, the longer it, can, it will actually sit and stay. And for ourselves, the value of being able to, to tell our minds, you know, sit <laughs> with this question, with this project, you know, stay, the more we're able to actually penetrate and look more deeply and actually have, allow deeper insight to arise. So the more we train our mental muscles to come back, to recognize and return without, as I spoke earlier about the importance of the attitude, of having a self-compassionate attitude and not beating ourselves up for forgetting or for wandering, but just recognize it and then uh, just catch the next breath or catch the next moment. The person is still there talking with us. Our mind wandered for a moment. Recognize where your mind went because you want to bring it to awareness and consciousness. You want to know what's calling you, but you just come back and you refocus and that builds those mindful muscles, the muscles of our attention and our, our intention get stronger. So that's, a, that's one of the first basic mind fitness disciplines, skills. Stop right there for a Sure. Okay. Here's a great technique. We learned this initially from um, one of our Tibetan teachers. And first time he came to Seattle, he was meeting with a group of us. And uh, he said, so how many of you have a meditation, daily meditation practice? And many people raised their hands and felt quite proud of themselves. <laughs> How many of you sit for an hour every day? And a number of people, I sit for an hour a day. And, he, and then he kind of leaned over and said, so how many of you who sit for an hour a day, if you're honest with yourself, your mind's just wandering for 59 and a half minutes and you're just doing kind of sleepy dog meditation, you know, <laughs> just total crap, you know, kind of good intention but not much discipline and people started to squirm. So said, maybe it's better if you just meditate for 30 seconds at a time. With good quality. Really, yeah. When we teach this in corporate circles, we call it uh, TQM, total quality meditation, <laughs> or stoplight meditation. But it's great because it really shows you how to do these mind sprints. So I'll describe how this works, and we'll do a few reps together, OK? So I'll use the bells. In practice, you probably won't be using the bells. But the bells are so cool, it's fun to show them. Um, when the bells ring, I'd invite you to just softly just make the sound, ah, you know, like you've been working hard and then you sit down ah. about to drink a pint and you're just, ah, you know, there's that just sweet space of relaxation and letting go and openness with awareness. And you want this awe to be like dropping a stone in the pool of awareness so that your awareness just opens. And as you do that, then the breaths will come and go. Sounds will come and go. Thoughts and mental images will come and go. No bother. No, there's no distractions here. You're just abiding in this openness, in this clear, open awareness. And we're going to hold that for about 20 seconds. And I'll snap my fingers, and it's done. Hold okay. in the sense that you're not holding your breath. The breaths will come and go. <laughs> but you. hold in the sense of sustaining awareness of just being here. And ah is the most open sound that we can make. So it's a wonderful sound to practice with. It's just ah, you know, it's just that. It, the sound itself creates a sense of space and spaciousness. It's like friends of ours who've studied Indian music, for some of them who trained really classically, for the first year of their training, all they did was play one note or sing one note. It was just 
Sa. And then just get that one note down really, 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 really good. You know, like per perfectly dialed in. And then once that's just like totally dialed in, you start to realize all the other notes come out of that one. All the other harmonics are there. So in the same way, you know, just, ah, just, can we be here? Ready, set, ah. Your eyes can be open or closed, doesn't matter. Just letting the mind be open and clear like the sky. Vivid, clear, present, awake. Welcoming whatever arises and passes in this clear space of knowing. Then let it go. And just relax a bit. Like, wow, that wasn't so hard. Maybe I can meditate after all. You know? <laughs> I could hold my attention that much. Let's do it again. Okay. One, two, three. Ah. If you can, bring kind of like a little smile in the background, you know, just like a sense of delight, curiosity, openness, non-judgment, just to brighten this space of awareness. Let it go. Okay. And then one more time. This one, do with your eyes open if you haven't done it. Eyes kind of soft, open, receptive. Ah. Ah. Remember the smile. Just kind of brighten that space of awareness. Curious, open, wonderful. And let it go. So your assignment, if you were so bold to accept it, when you leave, maybe sometime this afternoon here at the conference, just in the next coffee break or whatever, just pause in the midst of the hubbub and go, ah. <laughs> and just feel the buzz. Be the space in which the buzz is happening. If you leave here, pause on a busy street corner. Or if you go like to the pub or Infinity Foods or whatever, in the midst of the bustle there, just... Ah, <laughs> yeah, check it out. Here I am, yeah. open to. And, and begin to anchor that, not just with stoplights when you're driving in your car, but to anchor this with arriving in a new place or about to begin a meeting or about to, to cross a threshold or something like that. Just moments of coming really fully present and seeing what's going on inside and outside. How many of you think you could do that? Yeah? And, you know, just to, to do it frequently throughout the day, you can get these great apps for your phone, you know? Great, you know, Zen timer, <laughs> mindfulness bell, um, things like that. Set a little chime to, to ping. ping you throughout the day at random times, like your wake-up bell. We've done this in many really large organizations where There'll be a set of bells, or there'll be a little chime that goes off at random times. And it's just an invitation for everybody in the environment just to come back to themselves for a moment and just remember what's important. Take three mindful breaths. If you're talking to a client, it's OK to keep talking. <laughs> you know? it's, like, it's OK. But just to, keep, to create an environment that encourages people to just live closer to to home or to ohm or whatever you want to call this place of awareness. Not so hard. Yeah. Close, please. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we'd like to share a way that we teach mindfulness sometimes. This actually is a favorite kind of navigation tool at Google. It's sort of like mindfulness across four dimensions in seven steps, okay? Yeah, just very... For the engineers and the <laughs> <laughs> So it, it's beautiful because it's a practice of 
not uh, doing what you're doing already, but doing it, it in an intentional and extraordinary kind of way. So step one, let's all, how about I'll ring bells as we cross each threshold and with each bell you can just do a little ah, okay, just to mark the transition. With the first bell, wake up to your surroundings, eyes open, the lights, the space, the colors, perhaps the temperature of the air. Just be mindful of the field of your senses. As well as awareness of the people around you, just your environment. Where, where are you in this moment? Just really show up. Super here, I think she called it. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And with the bell, then drop in a little deeper. And bring your awareness just to focus in your body. Feel your body sitting on the chair, just places of contact where your bottom touches the, the seat, your feet on the floor, your hands touching each other or your lap. Just allow yourself to really drop into what it's like to be in your body in this moment. Sensations, vibrations moving through. After lunch, what's it like? And again, within the body, you might, as you do the scan, kind of scanning, running your internal radar through the body just to notice and appreciate this miraculous flow of the breath, sustaining your life, just keeping on going day and night. And the heartbeat in a similar way. Can you feel your pulse? Can you feel the, the pump and the rest, this rhythm that's with you your whole life, unlike any other muscle or organ? It's continually working. It's got this built-in rhythm and balance of rest, of work and rest, pumping out and receding back. So just kind of move the awareness through your body and Appreciate the gifts that your body brings you, whatever is speaking to you in this moment. Hmm. And with the next ah uh, dropping in deeper still. <coughs> ah. Ah. And opening the field of your mindful awareness to welcome the movements <coughs> of thoughts and mental images. And as you do, not to follow any of those thoughts and not to push any of them away, not to develop them or diminish them, but simply be that open, clear space of awareness in which those wavicles of thoughts and mental images kind of coalesce like clouds forming and dissolving into the clear sky just to be in the shimmeringness of that with great wonder, delight, perhaps with that smile of curiosity and openness in the background. And at this dimension, also bring awareness if there are any emotions present, just to recognize these again without embellishing or suppressing, just to notice what's alive in the realm of all these changing feelings, emotions, thoughts, and mental images arising, passing, moving through the clear space of your awareness. Continuing our guided tour of the many dimensions of our being, going deeper still. And here, just coming to rest in that clear, open dimension of the mind that is awake. So kind of in the radiance of that smile of knowing that you know, of being awake, that you're awake touching a dimension of the mind that's open and clear and vast like the sky, not so 
concerned with what's arising and passing within it, the just being sky, big sky mind for a moment. Awake, open, clear, still, infinite. Like the deep silence within which all sounds arise and dissolve. And then adding back into this clear awareness. Uh, welcoming the movements of the mind again. Sensing both this clear, open dimension of mindful, clear presence and the movements of the mind. The shimmerings of the mind. And then bringing your awareness again into the body to, as a primary focus, still aware of everything else, but they're more in the background and you're really, really bringing, shining the light, like you said, you had a flashlight of awareness, just shining that back into the, the physical sensations, places of contact, warmth, pressure, breath, the movement and flow, heartbeat, the breathing, other sensations moving in your body. And then letting the laughter invite our awareness to expand into the environment around us, again to hear the sounds, to sense the air, the temperature, the light, the colors, the presence of other people. The space that you're in, the space between the top, your crown and the, the, the ceiling and the spaces around you. And then let's do a final awe just to bring it all together into one unified field of being and awareness. How many of you think you could do that one on your own? Outer awareness into the body, the movements of the mind, clear awareness, take it back out. Simple practices, but very profound. And this is nice because it, it can telescope. If you have 30 seconds or a minute, you can go just do an inventory, a quick systems check. If you have 10 minutes or a half hour or an hour, and you can just change dimensions whenever you just kind of, it's, it's just not interesting anymore, you know, you can move on to the next one if you like. Or refine your awareness yeah. and your attention. So it gets more interesting. <laughs> but actually, any one of those dimensions could be a complete mindfulness practice or session on its own. So you could choose to just spend one session just with the body or the space around you just listening to sounds going on or any, any of these dimensions. Sometimes it's really nice to just weave it all together and just, yeah, to integrate all the facets of your experience in the present moment. So As, another... Just one thing, because especially some of us tend to focus more naturally or we have more of a home base in, in one of those dimensions where maybe we're more aware of our body but not our feelings or more our thoughts but not what's going on around us. So to, to be aware of all of these levels and to spend some time checking in can help you to expand the, the repertoire of your mindful awareness, you know, the scope, the spectrum of presence that you can bring in any given moment. So one other way to kind of frame and understand these practices of mindfulness, and keep in mind there are, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of different streams and styles of mindfulness practice, but this is pretty universal framework is the acronym RAIN, which I think is quite appropriate for uh, <laughs> Brighton and Seattle. Um, 
that we're talking about recognition, acceptance, investigation, non-identification, uh, recognition, what is present on the screen of my awareness, what, what little gelflings are dancing through my guest house, you know, <laughs> and, and to just see what's on the screen of awareness and to recognize and to accept it. It doesn't mean you have to like what's happening, but you recognize that, oh, there's sadness, there's joy, there's pleasure, there's pain, there's quiet, there's noise. Recognize it and accept it. Accept in, in the sense of not being in denial about it. We're wanting to raise all these subtle signals, these whispers to the level of conscious awareness where there is, where we can work with it. And then the eye investigation, there's a more young kind of generative engagement to mindfulness. It's not just totally this receptive mode, but there's really this deep curiosity of what is this? What is this? And a looking deeply, you know, any of us that are consultants or physicians or scientists or software engineers, you know, know this quality of what's going on here? You know, how do I debug this? You know, looking deeply into the complexity, trying to comprehend. Not necessarily, it could be analytical, but it could also be just a deep, intuitive listening. What's really going on here? And then this quality of non-identification is really the, to realize we're not defined by the experience. If there's anger or sadness or frustration or what have you, there's that experience. It, it, that's not me. That's, I'm more than this experience. I'm, we're more than any of those experiences, so we don't get identified with them or, or too attached in that way. Okay. Let's pop a few questions. Just as you sit there, what curiosities do you have? You know, if 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 you be so bold to share, call it out. Yes. Yes. Good question. So that's a great question, and it comes back to that balance of the, the active mind the and the quiet mind. If we try a lot, there's a big focus, she asks, um, observing in her mindfulness practice and training on, on clearing the mind, on quieting the mind, pressing the, the clear button, so to speak. And there are times when we have big questions that we'd really like to to access a deeper insight around. And how do I, how do those two work together? Is that the, the clearing the, of the mind of extraneous thoughts and holding, you know, con contemplating a theme or a question. And actually they work really well together. And that's where, like, when we speak of mind fitness, it's more than mindfulness. Mindfulness tends to be that, simply the awareness and the presence and the, that receptive quality of mind. But there's also reflective meditations, and there's that, that active aspect of the active mind where you can pose a question or a theme that you want to understand more deeply. And then you, it's kind of like dropping that pebble into the pool of the quiet mind. And it's more likely if you've spent some time being with the breath or you know, any of these practices that we've touched and explored a little bit that just bring greater calm, create more space in the mind. Then when you drop that question in and you sit with it and you're not trying too hard in a tense way, you're not struggling with the question, you're sit simply asking that question and you're listening for intuitive images or thoughts that might come up, feelings, you know, all those different kind of ways of knowing that we have, it's more likely you'll be able to catch that whisper of some inspiration or an image or a symbol or many ways that, that our deeper mind speaks to our, ourselves, to, to our more superficial mind, with ways that we can be present for it. And if the mind's very busy and, or too tense, it's more likely the, the circuits will be too jammed and we'll miss that uh, valuable insight or that inspiration. So in a sense, it's great to do some mindfulness practice, then sit and do, you know, hold 
just at pose that question that you're working with. You can even have a journal or draw or see how the, how the mind, the deeper creative, symbolic, intuitive mind presents a response to it. Or just you know, live with that question. Watch your dreams at night. Look for, you know, just ask to be, to be shown clues. Or however much be. time you have, you know, just you can and experiment with that. And also to keep in mind, mindfulness may not clear the noise from your mind. Completely. You may just become aware of how noisy it is in there. <laughs> you know? And you're not doing it wrong. You know, it's just a lot of people freak out. And, you know, it's like, I don't know what it's like in the UK, but I would imagine the same. A lot of people get excited about meditation and they get their meditation cushion and they're and all the, that stuff, and then all their, you know, they get frustrated and they bail and they have Zen decor, but no practice anymore, <laughs> you know? So to appreciate that, that when you sit down to meditate, sometimes, honestly, it will be a shitstorm of thoughts <laughs> and turbulent emotions. And it's like, you're not doing it wrong. You're just showing up for the party, you know? And it's like, like, it's noisy. This is what it is. And there's other times it's where you show up and you're sleepy, and there's other times that you show up and it's really a very shanti, quiet vibe, and you go, oh, I'm there, and, but, but you're there in the midst of whatever it is. It's like the Rumi guest house poem, which is a classic saying, this being human is a guest house. Every moment a new arrival, some joy, some sadness, a meanness, Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in for tea. <laughs> Welcome whoever comes, because even if they come as a crowd of sorrows, they may be clearing you out for some new delight. You know? So the, you know, not to feel bad if there's a lot of noise. And can you talk with questions? You can. Oh, yeah. And some questions, as many of us know, you live with for months or years. Just to have the practice of being mindful of what are the potent questions that journey with you through your life is a powerful practice. We have a friend who's working with, what am I grateful for? And just asking that question, you know, cultivating this attitude of gratitude, which is an incredibly powerful attitude to enrich and deepen our lives and our relationships, but to go beyond the superficial to really come into the deep feeling of gratitude and letting it kind of flow back, back to the source of, of that gift to really live with, so what am I grateful for in my life at this time, in, my mo in this day? And just to, that's the same question, but it's, it keeps revealing deeper and deeper layers and learnings. Oh, that we had more time. We do, tomorrow. We, we've got a whole day seminar tomorrow. We'll build on this. And we can come back again if there's ever any interest. You know? <laughs> As you see, we're rather uh, keen on this work. So. Um, but how about this? Just by way of review and just to, to kind of get our voices involved here. Um, sort of human mic style, like in the Occupy <laughs> movement, just in a word or an image, just anybody say something that was meaningful for you <laughs> that you want to remember from this session. And everybody who can hear what they say, repeat that. So just it's so a way of anchoring okay. our, our collective mindfulness and perhaps a review. Someone will remember something that you didn't remember. But yeah, a highlight, something you'd like to remember for, and take with you. Creative, happens, happens anywhere. anywhere, everybody, okay? <laughs> Presence. Presence. Relaxing. Relaxing. Space. 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 Answers. 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 Questions. <laughs> Apples. Apples. <laughs> Love. Love. It's okay if it's noisy. It's, it's okay, okay if it's, it's noisy. noisy. <laughs> Possibilities. Possibilities. Appreciation. Appreciation. Patience. 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 Connection. 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 Infinite. 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 Balance. 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 So imagine 
you know, imagine just taking the sprouting seed of what you touched here today and nurturing it and letting that grow and grow and grow and inspire everybody you meet along the way to grow their garden as well. How magnificent your life can become. And imagine developing teams and organizations that have a valuing of, an understanding of, a, a dedication to this work in order to build organizations and communities that thrive and have the capacity to bring through the wisdom and the good work that the world needs. How beautiful and magnificent a creation that can be. I'd like to do one last little I'll practice. Do one before that. Huh? I'll do one quick, just one invitation before that. Oh, yes. Just while oh. the rest of the time at the, yeah. at the conference and beyond, just to take one, one percentage, one portion of, of all the conversations that you have, you know, however many you choose, but just to really take that on as a mindful dialogue or a mindful conversation, to really show up, to challenge yourself, to be here for yourself, to really be in touch with what you're feeling while someone's speaking with you, and to really listen to them, like really fully, like they're the most important thing in the whole world, to really be present for them, and just, just kind of practice in daily life that kind of mindfulness in, in dialogue with each other, and, and run the experiment on that. Okay, so as we're wrapping up, if you're interested in the workshop tomorrow, talk to us, or Tom, or Louise. Uh, I have given Tom some e email lists. We'll put those up on the stage here. <coughs> we send out an email thought for the day or a meditation or a quote, usually five days a week. If you'd like to be on that list, it's a really nice way to stay in touch with us. And if you've got any questions, we'll, we'll linger on. So we want to do one last little practice, and then we'll read something together, and we're done here. Okay. <laughs> so imagine th this is a practice of dedication imagine you can gather all the positive energy and inspiration that we've generated through being together in this way gather that into you like waves of light or energy or strength and then imagine that you can let that energy or that light flow forward in the stream of your awakening being to light your way forevermore that you can draw strength from that. The charge in that battery will power you as your journey continues. And then imagine you can gather that light into your heart and let it just flow from your heart into the heart of everybody here who's been a part of this experience saying, here, carry a little bit of my light with you, a little bit of my learning, my love, my inspiration with you as you carry a little bit of each of theirs. And then let this goodness flow from your heart into the hearts of all your loved ones and friends, your pets, your colleagues, coworkers, neighbors, in infinite extension. Let it flow from your heart into the hearts of all beings that they too will carry some of your light and that it will serve to activate and affirm their potential to find the light of this clear awareness within them. And then in that, just to get us giggling a little bit as we walk out the door, let us read this, these words of wisdom by Dr. Seuss. You have, you have brains, brains in your head. head. You, you have feet in, in your, your shoes. shoes. You, can you can steer yourself in any direction, direction you choose. You're, You're on your own, own and you know what you know. And you are the one, one who will decide where to go. go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.